There are 50 Warframes as of now, and each one has thousands of different small aspects that form who they are and how they're played. Today, I tell you one fact about every single one. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. My name is Bonk and this morning we are giving a fun fact about all 50 Warframes. This fact can be literally whatever I felt like. You'll get the gist of the sort of facts that I mean once the list gets started. Only other thing to mention is that each fact will be presented very briefly as we will be moving through these frames pretty quickly. That being said, how about we start up? Saren is our first frame. She was originally to be named Saren spelled S-A-R-I-N and the the reason for this is that when sarin is spelled like that, it represents a colorless, odorless liquid chemical, a nerve agent, but her name was altered from the original after a first responder to a sarin attack, the bad one, not the name, suggested the name tweak. Also, they thought sarin sounded too masculine. I guess adding the Y in makes it less? Who knows? Next fact. The Witch Wisp is up next. She is actually the very first Warframe model designed with no feet, so jokes on you weirdos, no toes for you. In addition, she was the first frame to have completely unique movement animations, walking, sprinting, hard landing, and rolling. Bonus fact, cause it's cool, her theme is based off of the Willow Wisp, an apparition from folklore. Moving on. Soundmaster Octavia's fact is next. Octavia's sound effects were actually created by the Lester B. Pearson School for the Arts in Canada. It's a quick one, but still a fact. Who's got next? Yeehaw, Mace is up. Her name is most likely derived from the elevated land formation with a flattened top. She's named this because a lot of mesas, the rock one, can be seen in the southwestern US, where the idea of the gunslinger cowboy was seen the most. Her regulators are also a possible reference to Billy the Kid's group, known as the regulators. Cora, what you got? Well, as someone who is incredibly interested in mythology, especially Greek mythology, I'm glad to share this one with you all. Her name's inspiration possibly could have come from the Greek goddess known as Kor, aka, more commonly, Persephone, Hades' wife and queen of the underworld. Somehow, knowing that makes Korra so much cooler. Her name could also possibly be from a term coined by Plato, Korra, which meant neither being or non-being, but somewhere in between. Either way, very cool name. Teleporting in next is our favorite speed em up, slow em down frame, Nova. She was the very last frame granted a helmet that would alter your stats. Any helmet released from Necros to current day is entirely cosmetic. And if you want to know what the last stat helmet's name was, it was the Nova Flux helmet. Our newest frame, Steinax, makes his way following Nova, and although new, I will find a fact, and it is another Greek myth connection. Please forgive any words that I get wrong here, I'll try my best. His name was borrowed from the Greek myth character known as Astanax, a nickname the people of Troy gave to Scamandrius, the crown prince of Troy. Astanax means high lord or protector of the city. Dope ass name, and of course he's a gladiator that can fly, so it fits. You know who it is. <laughs> What's to know about Wukong? Well, if you didn't know, Wukong was the second of three frames originally introduced only in China for a period of time. The other two frames being Excalibur Umbra and Neja. Speedy Lightning flies in after the monkey. What's our fact about Volt? He is the very first Warframe to receive five different augment mods, with two of them being Conclave exclusive. These augments are as follows. Shock Trooper, Shocking Speed, Recharge Barrier, Transistor Shield, and Capacitance. Have you tried them all? Parasitic Predator Time Nidus. This frame is the first and to this day only Warframe that regenerates his own health intrinsically. He also has no shields at all, which allows for carrying the decaying dragon key with no negative detriment. From the left, from the right, behind you? Oh no, it's just Mirage. She is the very first Warframe that is known to have fought in the huge sentient war that took place before the events of the game and our journey as the player. The second frame to have battled in that war with her that we know of was Gara. Speedy frame number two, the Blue Beetle, it's Goss. His name originated from a German scientist named, oh no, here we go, Karl Friedrich Gauss, who made huge leaps in the fields of electromagnetism, differential geometry, and statistics. And yet, when there's a Gauss on your team, they slam into walls and give themselves brain damage. So the name doesn't really fit, huh? Our newest Prime release is up next, 
we've arrived at Revenant. During development, Rev was known actually as Vlad, named after the character that one day in the past an Irish writer named Bram Stokes would base the famous Count Dracula, the undead warlock, off of. Another one of those facts that makes me like the frame so much more. One of my top three favorite frames is up on the chopping block with our arrival at Protea. Both her shrapnel and shield grenades are stored in the thighs, right behind the side pouches of her utility belt. It's not one of our more titillating facts, but tis a fact nonetheless. So, you want to hear a story, huh? The Glass Warrior and Energy Master Gara time. Long ago, Gara was tasked with defending the Unum against a massive sentient. The sentient would attack the Unum, the tower, at nightfall and retreat by morning. In the morning, Gara would leave and hunt the beast. The Unum eventually added Temple Kuva to the wildlife in an effort to connect their consciousness and allow the Unum to find the sentient's hiding place during the day. But this was a horrible mistake. The sentient discovered it could use the Kuva to restore its forgotten ability to reproduce, and so its attacks became more difficult to repel and much more frequent. So Gara was forced to take decisive action. With a bomb in her chest, Gara sacrificed herself, scattering the sentient all across what we now know of today as the Plains of Eidolon. And during the night, the threat of the sentient still lingers, as it takes the form of three mindless Eidolons, hopelessly wandering the plains in search of its missing pieces, to one day become whole and destroy the Unum. I don't know if that's a fact as much as just a cool backstory, but I thought it was cool, so there you go. Now you know not only some things about Gara, but also who the Eidolons are and why you only hunt them at night. Neja's up next, the frame I call a she in videos sometimes, and lots of people get very, very angry. So yeah, you know what? The fun fact for Neja is that he's a guy. I know, I was surprised too when I learned that over a year ago. Yeah, that's right, I've known this whole time, but guess who got you to leave a comment? Time for the monk antipathetic to battle. Baruch's fact is that in the dev build, the original name for his absolutely nasty OP exalted weapon was Pacifist. Genius! I love it. I'm starting a petition to bring back the Pacifist. New name sucks. Come on, Rebecca, bring back Pacifist. You won't. The Tank of Tanks Rhino is our following frame. There's not really anything too interesting to mention for this guy. I mean, his name is Rhino, that's obvious. So what I will say is that in the Prophet trailer, he is one of the on-screen characters. And because of a problem in the animation stage, his intended weapon, Furax, that he was supposed to be holding in the trailer, isn't there. And instead, he just is super OP and able to one-shot punch everything without a weapon. And hey yo, here we are, the point in the video where I make my case. Have you been enjoying so far? I hope so. If you are, a like on the video would be super appreciated and go a long way in getting this video to others. And while you're down there, there's a, there's a red button that's pretty close to where you just clicked and it says subscribe. I think you should probably hit that one too just in case. Thank you everyone that did those things. You have no idea how appreciated it is. All right, let's get back into our next fact, ladies and gentlemen. Trinity, the support god, but not as god as Wisp. What you got, Trinity? On her immortal skin, there is a certain symbol that appears. This symbol is known as an Ankh. I think I said that right. It represents eternal life in ancient Egypt and is seen as our first or original cross. Adding on to that, her name also has links to Christianity with the idea of the Trinity. Now, if I'm wrong here, please do let me know, but I'm pretty sure I have this right. The idea of the Trinity in Christianity is that there is one God in three divine persons, that being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or, on the other hand, you could just go the video game route with the term Trinity, which represents an MMO party containing a tank, DPS, and healer. I find the other interpretation of her name more interesting, but you know, could mean that I guess. And again, if I get anything wrong in general in this video with the history stuff, do let me know, but I think I got it all right. Spooky Ghost Time, Sevagoth, the captain of the Tempstari, an old war railjack that was renowned for its rescue services. But one day, Sevagoth was lost to the void, and his final command was to have the Tempstari perform its final rescue mission, finding Sevagoth's own lost body scattered out in the void. And so, the Tempstari became a ghost ship. Haro's up. All of his abilities are referring to various parts of Catholicism. Condemned represents being condemned to hell after death. Penance is when actions are taken to atone for sins. A thurible is a metal sensor hung by chains. Within, incense is burned. And the thurible is usually used during mass. And his fourth ability, Covenant, is an agreement made by God with humanity in general. If I got any of that wrong, please let me know. But I'm 99% sure I got it right. Zaku, baby, my favorite frame and the best frame in the whole game. You know he's gonna get two facts easy. Anyone who doesn't play Zaku's throwing. 
Alright, first fact. Because Zaku is an amalgamation of three different frames, he is the only Warframe so far to not have a distinct gender, being referred to by the devs as they them. But concept art for Zaku shows that the original design was definitely female, and some of those early design elements are still present in our final Zaku look. Second fact, Zaku is the only frame in the game to have an ability to add a void buff to his weapons. Alright, who's gonna appear after the Zak? Well, it's our necromancer Necros. And to fit the theme of evil, he's got two things to mention. Firstly, he was released on Friday the 13th, an obvious reference to the movie of the same name. As well as that, equipping a maxed out redirection mod on the Kroos will leave him with exactly 666 shields. And if you don't know what that is, well, I mean, you should, everybody knows that. Both light and day, Equinox has arrived. What is there to mention for her? Well, actually, get ready for a psychology lesson. So come on in, open your textbooks to the page on Carl Jung, as during development, her separate forms were known as anima and animus. These refer to concepts in Jungian psychology that represent the feminine and masculine aspects that make up a person's psyche. Test on Tuesday, study up. Speedrun Master Titania. This character's concept is derived from an old Shakespeare play known as Midsummer Night's Dream. Within this play, the Queen of Fairies is known as Titania, and the King of Fairies is Oberon. Oberon existed long before this play was written, but Titania was created for the specific purpose of being in this play. Big Suckvalbin makes his way into our list next. He was initially known to the community by the name of Trollbin when he released because his vortex was actually bugged so bad that it was affecting players. As well as that, his potential ability to mess with your team using bounce pads added on to the Trollbin name. Later on, he was more commonly known as Boobin. I didn't find anything on why. On the Warframe Nexus app, sometimes you'll see a little nod to this name appear. Sneaky Archer Ivara. This time we move away from the Greek myths and head over to the Norse side of things. As Ivara's name originated from the old Norse word of, uh, mm, Ivar, I, th I think, which translates to tree warrior. In Norse legend, there was a deadly archer threateningly named Ivar the Boneless. Alchemist Lavos, the master of status. His default helmet has acid burns on one side of the hat. Everybody sees that. Maybe some past experiments did not go the intended direction. But along with that, the decision to burn the hat was actually made back in development to stop the helmet from blocking your ADS camera. Ember O'Clock, everybody. She was actually originally designed as a male frame as seen in beta footage and concept art and was changed to a female frame in update 5.3. That was a little short, so let's add another. She's based off of a Phoenix or Vermilion Firebird, as you can see through the bird claws she has in place of toes. Gyre is going to follow up Ember with the fact that two of her abilities, Arcsphere and Coil Horizon, actually use a refined object physics system as a little test for future development. Previous iterations of the old physics system can be seen through Grendel's roly poly move, ragdolls, and pickups. The elemental dragon is our next frame, and he actually has a bunch of cool stuff I can mention, so I'm gonna do three for him. The first is the fact that he actually appears to have six fingers, but one of them is just part of his effigy. Chroma is also the first known Warframe to be controlled by a faction that isn't the Tenno, and for Chroma, this faction is the Infested. And lastly, Chroma was developed under the name Dragon. Yup, just Dragon. Mag, woo! Very strong frame, what's her fact? Well, in update 7.0 in 2013, she became one of the starter frames replacing Volt. Although, later on, Volt does return, replacing Loki. And good, Loki's trash right now, he needs help. We have gotten to the Tree Man Oberon. Already kind of mentioned a fact about him in the Titania part, but he does deserve his own. At its original conception, Oberon's hallowed ground ability was actually called Stairway to Heaven. Not sure where that one came from. The frame is up next, the OG of OG frames, Excalibur. And as the original frame, of course, he has the most alternate helmets at a whopping number of 12, with the prime Excalibur helmet being one of the rarest in the game. And you know, that entire frame being pretty rare in general, but psh, helmets are more interesting. Invis Eradicator Ash. According to the original concept art, this is another frame who is intended to be the opposite gender. And to be honest, the other Ash looks way cooler, I'm not gonna lie. I'll add another here too. In the in-game files, Ash is still named simply Ninja. 
the Shieldmaster Hildren. When you use Hildren to pilot your Railjack, you are actually using your shields as energy for the Railjack's activated abilities instead of your normal energy. There are a few caveats though. The shield's cost for casting is 10 times the energy cost, and the cost will go up for a specific ability after you use it in a proportional amount to the shields you spent. But who cares about that detailed stuff? Shield God makes ship good, that's all you need to know. You hate to see him on your team, but you always win. Here comes the top hat homie Limbo. His fact is that he is the tallest Warframe in the entire game, including the top hat of course. He's even taller than Chromo with his pelt on. Garuda is our next contender, and we are going to be talking mythology again. As a Garuda is a legendary bird-like creature from Hindu myth, a Garuda also has ties to Buddhist mythology. Dakat Valkyr, another one of those frames that I enjoy to play. Her name Valkyr is from Norse mythology in the form of the Valkyries, a group of divine creatures that serve the gods by bringing those that died with honor in battle up to Valhalla. Although contrary to her name, thematically obviously she is a cat. So I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure on the Valkyries thing, because it doesn't seem like the devs even were, but almost 100, maybe like 87%, good enough. Ugh, Anaros, boo. Ah, fine, I'll say something. His name originates from two possible people in history. The first is Anaros I, an ancient Egyptian prince who rebelled against the Persians. Or, it could be, Anaros II, an ancient Egyptian ruler who also rebelled against the Persians 200 years later. Dang, those guys didn't give up, huh? Caliban, more like ban him from my team, dookie frame. Anyway, his abilities are based on sentient abilities. His Ninjago move is from the Conculists, Sentient Wrath is from Eidolons, Lethal Progeny is the summon used by Oculists, Sumulists, and Eidolons, and his Fusion Strike, the only good ability in my opinion, is from the Ropalist. Buff Caliban Spinjitzu DE, you won't. Banshee, actually from Irish mythology this time. A Banshee was a creature that would wail loudly when someone was about to, you know, die. Whoops. And as you can tell, both the name is exact and the vibe of sound is portrayed through Banshee's theme. The Iceman. Honey? What? Where's my super suit? What? Where is my super suit? A frame that has a very strong fan base, as I have learned the hard way. But what's the fact? Well, it's actually that Frost's design is based off of a previously designed boss for DE's previous game, Dark Sector. Although this boss was unused, the visual similarities are quite visible. Uh oh, Loki. Dang, I really wish you were still good. During the closed beta, I didn't play during this by the way, and I can't promise I can find footage of what I'm about to say, but I promise I'm telling the truth. You could use Loki's switch teleport on a defense cryopod and move it around the map. I wish this was still a thing. It's apparent it was a bug, and there's no way it would be intended because it breaks the game entirely, but still, pretty funny. Birdman Zephyr. Zephyr is actually the very first Warframe that was introduced to be buildable through parts obtained in your clan dojo. I'll also mention that his name during development was Tengu. The Mike Tyson Warframe. The punchin' powerhouse, it's Atlas. Let me tell you the story of his fattest punch ever. Gather round, peoples. Once upon a time, there was a fanatic cult known as the Telamons. They believed, like most cults, in a coming doomsday, a destroyer that would cause a rebirth. The Orican were like, Lamau, who the fuck cares? Until those cult dudes grabbed an asteroid and flung it directly at us. Instead of sending soldiers or a big boom weapon, only one man was sent to stop this hurtling ball of space death, and this man was Atlas. He petrified the Telamon defenders and created rumblers from the remains. Then, with a heave, he delivered an incredible blow in the form of a landslide that reverberated throughout the entire asteroid, shattering it as if it were made of glass into thousands of microscopic pieces, silencing the Telamon's chance for good. So yeah, his fact is that he single-handedly wiped out an asteroid and a cult in just one punch. Talk about two birds with one stone. Four frames to get their facts left, but I would be doing a disservice to the community at large if I didn't mention that my Discord is linked down below. Join the clan or don't, but still, the Discord is a good way to interact with fellow players and me. As well as that, we have areas to show off fashion, captura, builds, ribbons, or just talk about whatever you want. Anyway, it's called Aviator Legion, and I hope to see you there. Let's get to our last four facts, starting with the master of the mind, Nyx. Looking at Nyx next to Excalibur, there's almost zero distinction besides the helmet and the gender. This is actually caused by the fact that DE originally had scrapped an idea of adding alternate genders to all the Warframes, and as you could probably tell, Nyx was meant to be the girl version of Excal. 
but this idea again was scrapped as early as the pre-alpha. Third to last, Hydroid the Tentacle Terror, and he is actually based off of Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. This isn't just an educated guess either, as this was a claim directly from the development team. Second to last, the fat rolling ball that is Grendel, but his namesake is derived from a very well known story, and a story despised by high school kids across the nation, and that story is Beowulf. As Grendel is the monster of the tale, the destroyer and devourer of humankind. He sounds much more menacing than Grendel really is in game. And here we are, the very last frame that you guys get a little nugget of info about, Yoreli, and why not end it with another look into the origins of her name. This time, Yoreli is a girl's name of Native American origin, meaning water lady or small butterfly. And so, we are done. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Again, a like would be super helpful, a sub would be appreciated beyond belief, and why not head over and check out the Discord? If you guys have any fun facts about frames that you'd like to share with me and everyone else that watches this, leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear some more lesser known facts about these frames. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Play Zaku 24-7 or I'll tell everyone about your hidden wisp file. And good night.